It is Russell Wilson that goes to Denver. Here is the trade. Drew Locke, Noah Fant, the tight end, and Shelby Harris, the defensive lineman, plus two firsts, two seconds, and a fifth for Russell Wilson and a fourth-round pick. Three players, two firsts, and two seconds for Russell Wilson and a fourth. Okay, now we've seen the total parameters of the deal. Keep in mind, from the uh, Von Miller trade, they yeah. had an extra second and a third. Mm -hmm. So now over the next two seasons, the Broncos have no firsts, one second, three thirds, and three fourths, plus Russell Wilson. Now that you've seen everything, Dan, what do you think? Well, it's a, it's a haul. I mean, it was going to take a lot to get Russell Wilson out of Seattle. Seattle didn't really want to trade him. Uh, but they got a lot, and they got the three players. As mentioned, these are, these are good young players. Well, Locke is a developmental prospect, a quarterback, if anything. But Fant and Shelby Harris are good young players that can help the Seahawks. Uh, but in terms of the Broncos, they feel like their roster is strong enough to absorb those losses, to, to survive not having first-round picks the next couple of years, to plug in Russell Wilson uh, and, and make a run in the league's most loaded division. So uh, we'll see if they're right, but it, it's a high price to pay. You shouldn't be able to get Russell Wilson cheap. Yeah, and they didn't. Two firsts, two seconds, three players, and a fifth. It's pretty, pretty good. Nick, what do you think? Well, I mean, I think it was, uh, it's a high cost to pay for a great player. And, and we know that this is a quarterback-driven league. And it, to win, you have to have a quarterback. So Seattle at this point right now, they're kind of, okay, licking their wounds. Right, what are we going to do here? Are we just going to hang on to Russell Wilson if he's not happy here and he's disgruntled like last year? Is it going to be good for our team? I don't think so. So they go out, they, they trade him away, they get a bunch of picks for him, you get some talented young football players. So, you know, I, I think on, on both sides of this, you could say it was a win-win for each team. Now, it, it, it's to be seen if Russell Wilson can go to Denver and make them a playoff contending type team. And it's going to be, he's going to have to be, out, he's going to have to be the guy. He's going to have to come in, make that team a lot better than, than where they've been. They have the talent. They have the defense. Now can Russell Wilson make that happen? Keep in mind, in his career in Seattle, he had one year until this one under double-digit wins, and he had nine wins that year until this year where they had a, a yeah. bad year in his entire career. As we understand who follow these kind of things, the odds almost never change. Super Bowl odds for a team never change if a, if a positional player you know, gets traded. But quarterbacks affect the odds. <laughs> and quarterbacks <laughs> like this, potential future Hall of Fame quarterbacks, yep. certainly affect the odds. Look at that. Before he's 25 to 1, before the trade, the Denver Broncos to win the Super Bowl. After the trade, 14 to 1. The conference, 12 to 1. After, 7 to 1. I mean, yeah. these are enormous odds shifts, Dan Graziano. Even bigger if the division he was in didn't have Patrick Mahomes and, and Justin Herbert and, <laughs> and uh, Derek Carr. But yeah, look, I, I mean, it's, it's obviously Denver obviously views the move that way, right? This is you do not trade this much for a player if you don't think that's the player that's going to get you over the top. They believe this is a move that not, not just makes them an AFC West contender, but a Super Bowl contender. That is that is the bet that GM George Payton is making here by trading away his next two first rounders, all those good young players, all those other picks. So Denver has been viewed by those of us on the outside as a team that might be a quarterback away. We all imagine that quarterback is Aaron Rodgers. We now have to recalibrate our imagination for, to Russell Wilson in a Broncos uniform, and Broncos hope they're right. Um, Nick, let me ask you something Dan and I were discussing during the commercial break. Um, he's now going to a kind of pass-happy offense. Aaron Rodgers, former offensive coordinator, who's now the head coach, Russell Wilson is, and he's going to get what he wants. But is this a situation where be careful what you wish for? He is, as, I, as we've been saying, swimming with sharks in the AFC West. Not that the NFC West was a cupcake, but he's swimming with sharks, and he's going to get his wish. Is, is this the right move for him? Well, I mean, you never know. I, I don't know if this is going to be a great move. You, sometimes the grass isn't always greener on the other side. So it, he has the control over his trade clause or over his contract. He, if he accepts this deal, which I assume it's, it's a done deal, you know, he's going to go to a new city, a new environment. Um, he's going to have to win over this fan base. And he's going to already have a massive amount of supporters 
just saying, oh, well, now we have the guy. So now he's going to have to go out there and perform. So, you know, time will tell if this is going to be a, a successful trade uh, for the Denver Broncos and for Russell Wilson. If he goes out there and it doesn't look well and it doesn't go the way that he anticipates, then there's people probably going to say, yo, this wasn't a great trade. So it's going to come down to Russell Wilson, and if he can get the job done and he can take this team to a playoff-type caliber team against the teams in his division, we all know are playoff teams. Dan, uh, we all know also that Denver Broncos can't draft and develop a quarterback to save their lives, but boy, can they make some blockbuster trades for them. Here are the most different starting quarterbacks since 2016, since Peyton Manning left. The Broncos are tied with the Washington Commanders for the most with 11. Then the Jets, Bears, and Browns. But the most in the league. And now they've landed their guy. And the reason it was the most in the league is they couldn't develop a guy, Dan. So I guess know thyself, right? If you know you can't identify and develop the guy, then, you, then why keep wasting those picks on quarterbacks? You might as well trade for a known commodity. It's, it's a big swing, right? And it's like this, it, it's too important a position to say, oh, we can't afford to give up that much. I mean, the commanders who were tied with them were on the phone with Seattle last week trying to talk about Russell Wilson. They were being told no, presumably because – that wasn't a place Russell wanted to go, and they were already sort of down the road, obviously, uh, with Denver. So they'll keep looking. I'm interested to see what happens in Seattle, because last year we were being told the main reason Seattle didn't want to trade Russell Wilson was they didn't know where they would go at quarterback uh, if they did. I don't think Drew Locke is that answer. They have a ton of picks now. I I'm curious to see if maybe there's a move. Maybe Seattle now becomes a player in this offseason free agent market for quarterbacks. Uh, I don't see them stepping back and rebuilding with a 70-year-old like head you have coach. In mind. No, I'm just saying, like, obviously, I don't think you're going to get Garoppolo in the division, but, I mean, like, you know, are, are they now going to be players for, I don't know, can they get into Deshaun Watson if he becomes available, right? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.